Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about the Dallas Cowboys versus the New Orleans Saints recap and what happened on Thursday night on both offense and defense. Let's start on the offense first. So when you look at the Dallas Cowboys offensively, there's a lot to get concerned off, especially in the beginning when you look at it live stream. I was getting really concerned with how they were moving. It just seemed like they just weren't putting points on the board. But when you look at the second time around, you see that in the beginning it was a three and now just miscommunication. It's just the execution is not there at times. And it's just weird when, when you watch it because the offensive line is having its problems because obviously they're just getting back into being next to each other when they haven't been a cohesive unit in a while. But when you don't have your two offensive linemen coach there, you can't make adjustments to the play and that's why the running game is having the problem. But when you have a guy like Zeke also complimenting a guy like Tony, you don't just trade a guy like Zeke away just because he's not having a good time or, or a good day or he's injured or any of that stuff. It, the reason why Tony does what he does is because Zeke does what he does. He, he's a harder runner. People fear him. They get hit by him while Tony bounces off to the outside. He'll take a hit here and there, but for the most part, he has the finesse part of it down. And so when you look at Tony, you don't see him making the blocks like Zeke where he's putting his whole body on a 300-pound guy and, oh, he gets hurt? Wow, you know, we should trade him and stuff like that. I mean, put your body in the way of a 300-pound guy coming at you probably at like 20 miles an hour and, and see how well you do with your body throughout a whole course of a season. So the fact that he's out there and wants to kind of contribute, they're not going to just let him do it because he wants to. You've seen this coaching staff sit people when they need to be sit, as is AKA Dak. When, but and then when you go back to even Dak, Dak had a good game, but he's has his inaccuracies, and any quarterback's going to do it. But when you when the game is on the line, do you trust him? I know I do as a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I'm I don't really want anybody else back there because I trust his confidence. He has a heck of a leadership. And it really shows. So when you look at these wide receivers, it was amazing to watch Cooper do his thing back out there. And it was only limited, but still his presence there kind of helped us. When you look at guys like Lamb, he's still learning a lot. I mean, he, he does show flashes. I just don't think he's a number one receiver yet. I definitely think he's a great number two, a complimentary, and he has the potential to definitely be a number one. And I love Michael Gallup and his uh, toe drag swag it's so amazing to watch his sideline antics it's just amazing because when he goes up in the air and it's so far away you're like okay how is he going to do it this time so it, it's amazing to watch so it in i'm in all of these guys individually it's just they need to execute and put it all together offensively to kind of help help us get that confidence back that we can really take on a new one because we got washington coming up and they got a pretty good defense so let's look at our defense and see what they did against the saints So when you look at the Dallas Cowboys defense, I think it was amazing to watch these guys just fly around the football. And yes, you kind of have to put it in parentheses that it was Taysom Hill and he's not the most accurate quarterback, but honestly, he is a quarterback that loves to run. And when you're a quarterback that kind of just sits there and just waits for an opening to open and then you run, yeah, you're going to get some yardage and you're going to make defenses look bad. So that's why I don't really get upset when Dallas was allowing all that. It's just hate. You hate to watch it. But when you look at it again the second time around, you start to realize what the offense of them were doing and they were trying to even take those shots and, and try to get the pass interference on anthony brown that was part of their strategy you could see that in their game plan was they were just trying to throw it downfield to see if they can get a pi that is not a strategy you should be going in you should be trying to take a ball and run it down somebody's throat or throw it down the field to get a, a, a big play you, not not to get pass interference because you know somebody always draws it i think that's a really bad terrible strategy as a coach and I say that to, about Sean Payton. And he, I give that guy so much credit. But when I saw that was part of their strategy, it kind of just made me just, eh, I, I lost a little bit of respect for that. But as we go into our defense, our defensive backfield, we were really flying around. We were getting some interceptions. You got guys like LVE that's kind of disappeared in this defense. But he had a chance to make an interception really early and kind of set the tone for this defense. But he kind of missed it and whiffed. And, and Dallas's defense and Demarcus Lawrence stepped up and he made a play so it was it was out on them and there was our offense getting the ball so this defense was really flying and playing and and guys that were getting named 
you know, they, they were having to worry about Demarcus Lawrence. They were working worrying about Parsons. Well, Parsons was still doing his thing. Tenth sack of the season. You got Trayvon Diggs with his ninth interception of the season. So, again, these guys are definitely balling. And when you get pressure on the quarterback, you're going to throw interceptions. And this guy is just less accurate. So the intercepts were flying a little bit more. And honestly, when you really look at that game, there should have easily been like seven interceptions total. But, you know, there was some drops. There was some balls that were so inaccurate, our corners couldn't make the play. So the defense definitely played well. And I think that had a lot to do with the fact that Dan Quinn was coaching the overall game. So cheers to our defense. I love watching when they do that. But can we do that against better quarterbacks and, and not so great running backs? So let's watch what this defense does in the future. But I know I look forward to what all these rookies are doing. But again, I like to seeing Demarcus Lawrence back. And when we get Gregory and we and uh and neville gallimore i think it's going to just add on to this great arsenal of defense that we do have but when you look at the dallas cowboys team i don't think you should be too concerned the fact that they got a win is amazing puts the team again ahead in the division and if we can get this next couple of wins in the nfc east it definitely solidifies it and can get started getting ready for the playoffs but right now, there's the NFC East right in front of us, and right now is a really good lead. So Dallas is in good shape, and yes, they have room to improve, but guess what? They have room to improve off a bad game that they still got a victory, and yes, against a bad team, but you're supposed to beat bad teams. You don't get to make the schedule. Dallas Cowboy people don't go down there and go, okay, well, we want to play this guy at this time. No, you're given the schedule. You beat the guys that are in front of you. You can't predict injuries, and that's the reason why you play the game. But Dallas got the victory, so be happy, Dallas Cowboy fans. I know I am, and I'm Primetime Phil, and thank you for subscribing. I always appreciate all your support. Make sure you hit that like button for me, but don't forget to always ring that bell.